So you've got embitterment, and that's... Well, how would you classify embitterment? That it, yeah, the class, the, I suppose the, the key word's bitter. But the component parts of that, there's a huge amount of anger. There's outrage. There's the desire no, for revenge. There's no resolution. There's no resolution. Is that part of the embitterment or is that a driver for the for the embitterment? The embitterment, re, the resolution is needed to relieve the embitterment? Uh, is that also because there's a sense of powerlessness that within there in some context that you're not able to resolve that situation? So if you look at the forces, you look at um, the first responders, police, etc. Mm -hmm. There's a rank structure, mm -hmm. and if you've gone to someone and said, "Right, this is going on. This this needs to get resolved, and these people are doing a not very good thing," you've approached somebody of in authority who can potentially look at resolving that. They go, "Yeah, yeah, I'll sort that. Don't worry about it." And they don't. They cover it up because maybe they're complicit within doing that. But there's no way you can get that resolved. That's going to hang over you like a dark cloud. Yeah, because a key component of embitterment is the lack of resolution. Mm. Or the lack of resolution that you need to relieve the bitterness. There's a sense of justice in there. And I think you're right. I think... but. I think that runs across a number of things is the power issue, where the power sits, whether that's perceived or actual as a material. That runs through quite a lot of PTSI, CPTSI, definitely sits within MI, moral injury. Embitterment, yeah, most definitely. Disenfranchising, a total loss of power or capacity to influence or act. I think there's also a huge amount of isolation in embitterment. Mm. Yeah, is that that person then dissociating or distancing themselves from that group of people, that situation? Either distancing or being distanced mm. from? It's that um, sense, again, that, and the, I think that's interwoven with the power piece. Mm. But then there's also dissociation going, I'm still, with, I'm still in that group, bodily, but mentally, I'm off over here. Well, yeah, it's like you don't see me, you don't hear me, you don't acknowledge what's going on, you don't acknowledge the wrong, and that's part of the powerlessness. Why can why is nobody helping me with this? Or why are you a person who's supposed to be in authority, power, and control, not resolving this problem because it is uh -huh. a problem? Yes. It's what Tony keeps going on about in for assist, isn't it? The MOD, the armed forces need to look at sexual trauma, sexual abuse, mm -hmm. and they're ignoring it. Yeah, it's the lack of acknowledgement. Mm. How much of that lack of acknowledgement then causes that more injury? And the embitterment. I think mm. lack of acknowledgement is a massive part of embitterment because there's a huge injustice there that's not addressed, not seen, not acknowledged. Yeah, well, that goes then for, like, Leo's dad and all the men that came back from Janetville. Yeah, it's a lack of acknowledgement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
And then there was also by the communities, as I mentioned before, by mind reading. Oh, mm-hmm. you've had a sunny, nice sunny tour out in out in the Congo, been up deep, sun up by the round by the pool, when in fact you've been in one of the hardest battles of that era, possibly. Mm-hmm. A hard fought battle. Well, I think that visibility issue. With PTSI, CPTSI, and with moral injury, a lot of the challenge is, for me anyway, the understanding what still needs to be resolved and So there's two things. There's like the community response, the, the the outside people response, and I think there there's a like a again there's a lack of understanding, a lack of visibility, is a lack of capacity to understand. On the on the individual side, there's the lack of capacity to share, because how do you put some of that stuff into words without damaging others? You don't want to because it's a bearing of the soul. So there's almost like that blind spot in the middle, the no man's land. And then you've got embitterment, which can layer on top of PTSI, CPTSI, moral injury, where the outrage transmits into that bitterness because the outrage isn't resolved is it almost like a sequential thing where you start off with the with the the fracturing of your belief structure there's the the injustice and the the outrage at it the, the outrage doesn't get resolved doesn't have an outlet it just sits there and sits there and sits there because of the lack of acknowledgement until it becomes what keeps you in the injury because the need for the acknowledgement to resolve the embitterment overrides everything else. Because that becomes a point of focus. And as long as that outrage and that need for acknowledgement and resolution of the bitterness sits there, you're going to hang on to the fractured beliefs and value system because you can't recreate them while you've got that injustice sitting there, where you've got that rage and that embitterment. Hmm. But is there also like a leakage from like childhood as well? So then if you experience something, it's like being a powerless child, isn't it? Mm-hmm. And there's no acknowledgement of, oh, I experienced this when I was a kid. And I kind of subconsciously maybe reverting back to that or partly back to that. Because that's never been resolved. There's never been any knowledge by, learned by the parent or caregiver, whomever, by saying, when they would say things like, oh, you didn't have as bad as what I did in my day. You you know you don't know that you've ever been you don't know that you've been born. And that sort of all those sort of things. So if those things then aren't resolved back then, you've got all this going on up up here in the future, going no acknowledgement of what you've been through, no resolution there from the part, chain of command. So that's like your as we mentioned. That's like the bids and all that contracts in parent, child, child, parent, 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 sort of malarkey. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if that's not, <laughs> if there's, I know, eh? I know what you mean. Yeah. 
And if that's not getting sorted out mm-hmm. up here, that's kind of then, is that an, almost like an abandonment of the previous self? Not abandonment of the previous self, but there's that kind of linkage, I should say. I think there is a linkage because where do our values and beliefs come from? Hmm. Where do our ethical structures come from? The things we develop based on our previous experiences, our senses of right and wrong, our senses of what we can trust, what we can't, and how the world should operate in relation to us. I think there's an element element in there sometimes where and maybe this is where moral injury is the sequential the sequential events that finally end up I result in that full erosion. It's the it's the incremental moral injury until you get to the the, the clusterfuck stage where there's the shattering, the realization. And maybe part of that is the validation of beliefs that the individual has fought against or worked to disprove or or wants to disbelieve that maybe they have as a result of childhood experiences or early or previous experiences Mm -hmm. that have challenged or maybe put them in that place of moral discomfort or in that place of devaluing and disempowering. Mm-hmm. And they've managed to sustain that sense of value and power up to that point of realisation of all of that. And that's when the value and power base totally shatters. And then comes embitterment. Because as its core, if you work in the principle that everything we feel has a has a positive intention, the intention of embitterment yeah. is to take yeah. power back to resolve that power imbalance. You took something of mine, I need it back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Until I have it back, I can't rebuild anything else until I have this back. And there's also, with that embitterment is, want to take revenge possibly on that individual or thing Uh or organisation, whatever it is. So you get um, not disenfranchised, I can't remember what it is now, just as a disgruntled employees Mm. and go around and sabotage that employer. There's been a sense of injustice as you didn't carry this out correctly. You've got to get some more values and beliefs. Is embitterment corrupted advocacy? Oh. Painted advocacy? Depends what action is taken out, isn't it? Well, sorry, I'm not going to... No, it's not tainted. It's almost like... Because it's advocacy that, that resolves it, isn't it? Yeah. Is it an unhealthy advocacy? Yeah. Uh huh. It's still a form of advocacy. It's just it's been denied for so long. Yeah. Yeah. It's the desire for advocacy. When will you hear me? When will you see me? When will you stop doing this to me? You yeah. need to do that now. This has to happen now. Yeah, and there's that then from that person in authority or often person in authority, then yeah, thanks for that. See you later. Quite possibly, because sometimes in these situations, like Horizon is a classic example. Mm. You're literally kept, the people were kept in that spot of injury of embitterment sometimes 
because of the refusal to be acknowledged and seen. So the advocacy isn't met. Mm. Well, how much of I'm happy to take all this money in mm -hmm. because it's not affecting me on a personal basis. Well, that's specific to Horizon, but if mm. you look at the, the moral injury in terms of that, because, yeah, I agree with you. Uh -huh. But if I imply that scenario to... I'm going to put this up. You're going to put this up? Mm. You, want to, you want to ask me about that first? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> permissions, Rich, permissions. Yes. So how do you resolve the need for advocacy, which resolves the embitterment, so that you can work with the injury? Because in some situations, you may not ever be able no. to get the advocacy. No. Well, you look at how long, and they never got an apology per se, is the nuclear test veterans. Mm -hmm. What I've got is... Easy commemorative medal. Thanks very much. See you later. Mm -hmm. So in one way, they've got a slight amount of acknowledgement, but they've not got a full distinct apology saying, this was wrong, what we did to you. Mm. Because that then leaves up them open for comp paying out compensation. Mm -hmm. And is that where a lot of this comes from, is we don't want me or are part of this organisation or personal, we don't be culpable for paying out. Well, now you're getting into the background politics of particular situations. Yeah. And I don't think we can answer that. No. Because the debate was all about... It's like the embitterment is the sibling... Older, younger, bigger, smaller, twin. It's it's the younger twin of advocacy, or the younger sibling of advocacy, because it it's. Or is it the buddy of advocacy? Well, at the point of resolution, what happens to what happens to embitterment? They probably leave, or it would slowly disperse, won't it? It disperses. Hmm. It's funny. It's like I've got this visual almost of this angry child that suddenly goes. Hmm. Is that the reformer element, the justice seeker of advocacy? It is the morality and the ethics part of advocacy. Hence the embitterment and the outrage. Because yeah. where embitterment occurs is the element of injustice. Or that sense of injustice. Yeah. But that, yeah, as I mentioned before, that's why that conflict management model, I think, is really important. It doesn't have to be that perception of humiliation, injustice, frustration. It doesn't have to be real. It, it, has, it, can, it can be a perception. So there's still... Who decides it's real? Well, in that person who's been affected. Because that comes back to that mind reading comment you made. Mm. Right. Where part and parcel of that is the assumptions we make about the influence those experiences have on others in terms of how they view or see us or respond to us or engage with us. The relationship piece, that's the contracts that are broken. Mm -hmm.
and that then dismantling of those belief structures as well. So you have a belief about this person because they're in this position that then potentially holds true cross for all those people in that position. But there's one person somewhere within who holds a position of like authority or somewhere, but they're not following through or they're not listening or not acknowledging what you've gone through. Then where does that leave the rest of those people in that position? Then there's lack of trust, psychological safety. Because I can't trust this person here. That means I potentially can't trust this person here of authority either. I can't go to them to go and ask for help or support because they're associated with that person. Yeah, it's the it's the the dilemma of if this is true, Mm -hmm. what what does that mean for everything else? Mm So then a lot of plays of that as well will be psychological psychological safety. And how well do you trust the people in this organisation or the organisation? Because if you say if that's true, for that person not doing their job, et cetera, they're associated with that person, or you know, there's that commonality of like rank, et cetera. Yeah, then does that that holds true for that person? So psychologically, I can't trust because I can't trust that person. Then this person can't be trusted either. Well, our contracts are all about safety. Mm. Yeah, they're about the things that we know to be true. Mm. There are the things we assume to be true. There is reciprocity from others that we assume we will receive. Yes. So yeah, that's about that psychological safety. which is present in all of our relationships. You have to be in order for that relationship to exist, unless it's a very fractured one, at which point you know fine well, there's no safety and you act accordingly. But it comes back to that layers And what do you do when you cannot regain the power because either circumstances have changed, there isn't going to be a culpability acknowledgement? How do you defuse and disperse the embitterment, take back the advocacy in a positive way or the power base so that you're empowering yourself so that you can resolve and start to rebuild all of the contracts and belief structures underneath that make up Mm-hmm. Well, is that why then? Is that why some people will then go on and and form organisations to help resolve that to get that change they never experienced? Uh, or, and I think on the other hand of that is there's people who will move on with their lives. I use that term. Who will move on? However, there's still all that hanging around them and they just don't want to acknowledge it anymore because it's too painful so they're kind of shutting that part of themselves off and to move on yeah I think there are two well there's there's a number of options but two of them are either find a way to to almost isolate and time bind the embitterment so that so that as you progress, you 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 almost dissolve the the immediacy of the impacts. The embitterment is still there. The mm. immediacy of the impact in your day to day life with a bit of distance from the event. Yeah. Or if you can't do that, then it's how do you advocate to take the power back to address the imbalance mm. to resolve and gain that acknowledgement. 
And yeah, I think there's a lot of that that you see in... Because when people take on those campaigns, challenges, yeah. the writings of the wrongs, it's the ripple effect, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Because they're not only resolving it for themselves, they're giving a route for others to resolve it too. They're creating a channel for advocacy. Mm. Wanting to be heard. Needing to be heard. Mm -hmm. I'm just watching time. You're going to run out of time, Rich? Yes, I know. And if you like these kind of chats, we do them more often. 